What's up guys, my name is Satyan Sierra and welcome to another episode of Hablando Shit. For the most people who follow the channel from the beginning, you're like, wait, he's speaking English? I mean, not that I've not done this before, but yes, this channel is mostly and kind of mainly Spanish, but I kind of want to do something different today, kind of beginning of something new that I want to do in this channel. I kind of want to mix things up a little bit. If you know me personally for a long time, you know that I love film, I love discussing film. I love reviewing films whenever I can. I always wanted to find a platform where I can just be myself and just review films and hopefully you guys can see them. Most of the reasons I opened even a YouTube channel was to review movies. And I just wanted to profess that because that's something I want to be in. That's, that's a career I want to work in. But I also love creating content. It's something I've been doing quite recently since I opened the channel many months ago. And I just love it. I love every step of doing it. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a lot of work, yes. I love doing all things that are not film related, but that's been, this has kind of been holding me back from doing what I want to do from the beginning, which is reviewing movies. I wanted to do a lot of film reviews right here. Hopefully you guys can see and enjoy and discuss movies with me because it's not just me just talking. I just, I want you guys to interact with me and talk about the movies and talk about your opinions and if you disagree with me or agree with me or, or just whatever, you know, anything related about the movie or films in general. So I kind of want to bring that a lot more that film aspect and film world to this channel of hablando shit but don't worry nothing's gonna change that I, I still do a lot of things of music reactions i'll do a any a podcast i'll do any kind of random video that stuff that i maybe i'll start bringing stuff that i did on the so show over here because for whatever reason a, a lot of people just cling on to this channel and i'm like well why don't i just bring stuff that i'll do over there and have people watch it over here i hopefully you guys enjoy this new part that i'm gonna do I'm, I'm, i'll probably do some other english stuff as well so nothing's gonna change i'll still do a lot of uh urban music or reggaeton or anything spanish i'll still do spanish podcasts i'll still do a lot of spanish videos so hopefully you guys can are okay with balancing both but yeah i'm just saying we'll get to do a new phase of I don't know shit. And also, I'm not just gonna review all just the latest movies. I mean, I will try to review all the latest films. It's hard to do that sometimes. I want to review the latest films, but not just that. I also want to review movies that I love or just movies that I just really want to talk about. And, and maybe people have a review, maybe people have reviewed endlessly, but I just want to get my own taste and a unique perspective on it. So there you go. It's just something I just want to let you guys know that this is gonna be the future of Hablando Shit. There's a lot of again wide variety of content and i hopefully i can bring a lot of people from different areas of the world for the first movie that i'm gonna review i wanted to review the latest one of the latest netflix movies that come out i don't know was it like maybe a week ago i'm not sure but it's a movie that came out pretty recently people are talking about brief reviews a lot of good i guess audience scores the movie that i'm gonna review today is none other than malcolm and marie <laughs> You are by far the most excruciating, difficult, stubbornly obnoxious woman I've ever met in my entire life. I fucking love you. Oh, he's so sensitive. He's romantic. But he's sweet, right? Well, I mean, yeah. So I, I didn't know much about this movie. I kind of knew that, you know, it stars John David Washington and Zendaya. And it kind of has like this artistic, very art house style film. But I don't know what the premise was about. I kind of had an idea that it'll be about this couple, but what goes around the movie, I I don't know. And I kind of already knew they had a lot of influences from French New Wave. I kind of heard that uh, that comment before. And yes, I totally like I, I agree. It was like kind of an homage, but it's also trying to do French New Wave film, but modernized and Americanized, as you, as you can say. I just love the premise of a movie. I just, it's very simple and basic. It's not, there's not really a story. It's just these two people in a relationship and basically seeing their interactions and their discussions and arguments. So, so, so we'll see a lot of that. But of course, the movie tells you like from the beginning, like why are these people discussing about these things? What are, what are they talking about? What is the point of all these discussions that they're having? But it's basically just having an eye in this relationship which is interesting like the whole film is just that it's just these two people talking throughout different moments in the, in the movie throughout different moments of a night and man the way they did it by the way i love there's a lot of one track shots in this movie which the beginning this intro the introduction 
is incredible. I mean, the way that they kind of just stay put and keep moving the camera but not cutting it, that's a lot of mastery and crafting work. I don't know how to do it. I mean, maybe they maxed some edits, like maybe some parts you're like, maybe they edited it right there we didn't notice. But there's a lot of one track shots and I mean, oh my God, I mean, Jesus. I, I, I mean, I just love that. I, I love how they did it and, and still balances these wonderful performances in one single shot. I mean, one lock take, of course. I mean, wow, it, it's crazy. And also love the idea of just the, where the whole movie is just, we're in this night and we're with these two people. We, know, we don't see anyone else. We just focus on these two, which you can say it's like a, it's a bottle film and it is, but I, I, it's not about that. It's really about the relationship, but making it the way they did it by staying put in this one place, which is their house and just kind of almost because it feels like it's just a continuous scene you know from the beginning we see their their discussion their, their conversation and it keeps going 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 yes we do see some time passing but a lot of it feels like it's very continuous and linear and we're there for hours it just feels natural that way and i don't know the way they did it was was very good I, I, amazing but since we are just focused on this one location and these conversations they, they could have just done like a standard just two shots and like you know just put the camera here just focus on the table and that's it they could just not do a lot of maneuvering with the camera but i love that here i think the director's called it sean levinson who also wrote this movie decided to do a lot of maneuvering or following him around go, go around the house following the different like perspectives I like that. It's, it's also moving and so captive and it keeps you moving and it doesn't feel like it's slow or it takes a halt because you're right in the thick of the action of between these two people arguing or just having a conversation or doing different things. It doesn't feel static. If the writing is good or really good or better, the camera doesn't have to move much. It, it, all, it all depends on the performances and the writing. But what I love about Sean Levinson here, what he did was just keep things moving and also very a la French new wave films where you can see like breathless I, I mean I remember watching that movie for a film class I really kind of like that movie and again right now I kind of have a good appreciation of it I remember watching it in the beginning the first time I watched it and I was like what the hell is this there's a lot of nonsense in this movie I think it's beautifully made but the, some of the characters are like uh, this is stupid I was kind of annoyed for the first watch just think about it now it's like man there's a lot of great stuff in that movie and although a lot of it's just it's, it's not very linear there's not a lot not a story really going on it's still good it's just seeing these two people having a conversation or going around and like there's not a really okay what's the end game here like there isn't really an end game it's just we're following these two people which is what we're doing with here in malcolm and marie there's no end game there's no like oh this is leading up to something it's just these two people kind of working on their relationship which oh my god there's a lot to work with but yeah i love the direction i love the way it was filmed it was great I, I, also the movie's black and white which is beautiful oh my god this movie i gotta say cinematically like visually it is amazing a lot of shadows and lighting because since it's at nighttime there's a lot of good use of the lighting from the within the house some of the darkness from outside the house it man just it's amazing it's captivating it just looks cozy as well it's also like the music goes along here a lot you know there's a lot of jazz and a lot of soul music and i enjoy it it gives you the mood so it uses the lighting the shadows and the the tint of the colors you know the lack of i guess and the way that the, just the music and the, with the way it moves, a camera moves and the performances everything comes together so perfectly it gives you the mood and but it's not all cozy as i, I kind of hinted this relationship is pretty messy because i thought before watching the movie i thought i was like oh maybe it's like a super loving movie because I, I didn't even see the trailer i saw a little bit of it but I, from the music that i heard from that trailer from a little bit i, I heard uh i saw or heard i thought it was gonna be like a sweet little movie you know like these two uh, loving people you know, maybe there's some stuff going on, but we're just going to follow, follow these conversations of these people that really love and care for each other. <laughs> and while that's maybe there, most of it is just these two people fighting and arguing against each other and bringing some stuff up, some 
intense stuff. I'm like, oh my god, this is this is uncomfortable to watch right now. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of uncomfortable watching. You're like, you're on the sidelines just seeing these people fight over and over and over. It's like you're hanging out with a couple and you know, you don't have any other friends. It's just you and these couple who are you also your friends. And then they start fighting. And then it just goes on. And you're just there like, well, they picked me up and drove me here. Oh, fuck, what am I gonna do? Should I call an Uber? God, this is really uncomfortable. Fuck, a lot of that happened to me in this movie and it'll happen to you if you're not seeing this movie because oh my God, there's some stuff. And some stuff that these people bring about maybe each other, some stuff that happened in the past, some of the like, maybe some stuff that doesn't relate. I mean, the stuff that relates to them sometimes it's, it's very strong and, and the way they say some things sometimes they can be like harsh and like oh my god this is uh so it's like it was tough sometimes it was tough and but also love this conversation that doesn't have to do with the relationship as well sometimes not all the conversations have to do with the relationship sometimes they bring some, some other stuff and and i love uh, the facts that they bring some like anecdotes or something or i don't know sometimes they talk about other topics and it it's just good. I love watching those conversation films. I, I Is that a genre? I don't think so. But I love seeing movies where people just talk. That's most of the movie. And it's enjoyable when it's written well and there's a lot of great performances, which it is here. Of course, I won't say what they discuss because, you know, I will spoil the movie for you. But, you know, there's a lot of things in these, these conversations that they, you know, it kind of shines a light on who these people are. I, I guess Malcolm is a kind of a narcissistic kind of harsh but he's not really like a, a terrible person he's just very into himself when you can kind of tell that he does love and care for marie there's just a lot of stuff conflicting stuff from him that it just you, you kind of question like does he really care about her so a lot of situations arise from him but it's not that Marie is perfect either it's not like she's like the one that's like perfect and he's the one that's like the whole package of fucking problems she also has her own things we also tackle some stuff from her and you know sometimes <laughs> there are moments where I'm like okay we settle this we can move on and then she comes out of nowhere like but wait a minute i'm like oh come on why can we just stop this please that those kind of moments kept increasing the uncomfortability because you're like oh my god i thought we were we were done with this and we're bringing this back oh my god and all these things felt real that's the thing about this movie some a lot of these things feel real sometimes it can be a little over dramatized because you know it's a movie you know there's a lot of loud like shouting and a lot of like visceral reactions and stuff like that but a lot of things felt like real things from couples that maybe you've seen or experiences that you had with your own significant other a lot, i mean a lot of things are great i mean for the writing and then they talk about the performances are incredible john david washington oh my god love them in this movie and the first time I saw him was in The Black Klansman, which I adore that movie as well. But I remember him maybe not being as strong. I remember he was very good. I remember being like, okay, he could be a little better, you know, a better actor. Like, I just mean, like, he's not, like, a very strong actor from that movie. He was still very good, but I don't think he was, like, strong. Maybe we just have this also that this kind of unfortunate limelight, like, oh, he's a son of Denzel Washington, so he's supposed to be up there in that caliber. So it was kind of not fair you know to kind of compare him to his dad who's incredible i did really enjoy the movie i thought i kept seeing him stuff and he was getting better and better i have not seen tenet yet but this is the movie although again there's some previous movies that i've seen him become better and better and being like okay you know i'm more confident in this guy but this is the movie i'm like holy shit and what a platform to just you know show his talent and ability because holy crap the amount dude there's a lot of long again so I told you, there's a lot of long takes. So that means there's a lot of lines to memorize. And holy shit, you didn't fail in a single one? I can't, I cannot imagine how they filmed this movie. Because I don't know if they stumbled in one of their lines. They probably happened, must have happened. Imagine those long takes and have to do them again and do the lines over and over again until you got them right. But not also just saving the lines but also delivering the way they're meant to be delivered you know from the, like these visual reactions or this like heartfelt moments or these moments of like i'm on my soapbox i gotta speak to you god damn it yeah i don't know how they do it but he is one there's a lot of moments where i'm like i'm just blown away from this guy so 
I love it. Love this movie. And Sandia is also great. I mean, she's very good. You can see all the different emotions she can go from like faking like she's crying, from actually crying, but also being happy, then being loving. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's doing all these different things to looking like she's mad and then she's looking like she's bored. And Dude, she is amazing. Delivery, memorizing all those goddamn lines. How, how do you people do it? Stuff about her character is very interesting. And also stuff from Malcolm, from like the stuff they talk about. I, I don't want to say what he does specifically. This was stuff that he talks about that is good, especially somebody that loves a certain thing like I do. And he talks about it and, and just the passion in him is good. It's also stuff from Marie, the stuff that she, she feels, stuff that she went through and talks about and why she feels these uh, the way that she feels there's a lot of things you, you understand why she's where she's coming from you know i understand where she's coming from it, it was it was tough to watch these things happen so she was wonderful i i love them both great and i do feel that relationship i did feel the love for each other but also the, <laughs> the hatred they have some for each other i mean they, they love each other but there's a lot of fighting arguing but Sometimes they say some shit, I'm like, so did they mean, did they actually mean what they said to each other? <laughs> I mean, do these people love each other or what is going on? So it was an interesting relationship to see and, and seeing the things that they go through. I'm like, man, where are we, where are we going to end with this? Like, where are we going with this? Hopefully this goes to a good place, you know, that's better for everyone. Also, I got to say, at first it was weird seeing like Sandeo being with John David Washington because... Just, just Zendaya looks a little bit younger. I mean, she's about, almost about my age, but just, you know, it, it, these are kind of roles that fit more to people that are maybe a little bit older, maybe, maybe their late 20s, and I don't know how old John David Washington is. But, I mean, there's some stuff from about her age that they do touch upon in this movie. But sometimes in the beginning, it was, just, it was weird, the, the physical of him looking a bit older and him, sure, her looking a little bit younger. And I was like, I don't know, but it worked out. It worked out throughout the movie and I'm like, a couple minutes in I'm like what am I thinking about like it's not a big deal and the way they counteract with each other and interact with each other is good I mean you couldn't ask for better actors in here and some people want to come in comment like oh is, there, is this movie about race not really they do touch upon race but just because it stars two black people you know in a prominent role because there's no one else in this movie while they do touch upon race and it, it also Kind of what I'm about to say is what they kind of touch upon in the movie itself, like line per line. You know, they do touch upon race because, you know, they're black people and there's a lot of things that unfortunately they have to go through in society, in the U.S. society. But the movie's not about race or anything at all. They do touch upon it because it's experiences and lives that they only can know as black people. And so and they do touch upon that, but it's not like a main focus. It's not like this is what the movie's about. But I do love that it stars two black people because they bring stuff to the table that maybe we focused on, let's just say it, like two white people. Maybe these conversations that they have would never have happened. And, and or maybe some of the situations that we talk about would never have happened. I mean, the movie itself, the situation that is focused here is not about race, but they do touch upon stuff that has happened. So I, I love this. I love that they're you know putting these black people in prominent roles and and not nothing like stereotypical or nothing that to be preaching about things that they feel like to preach about over and over again and not saying like talking about race issues is not something we need to talk about or talking about black history or talking about anything related to black culture i'm not saying that's bad but i'm just saying a lot of a lot of movies feel like they have to touch upon these things we don't really have to i love that this movie does does touch upon it because they kind of have to or at least for these characters that they created i do have to say for negatives i sometimes they drag on a little bit with the, the arguments because it kept going and going some of these conversations are long again they are long and sometimes they kind of repeat they'll bring back some stuff again over and over again so sometimes a bit from the middle it was kind of already feeling like a almost like a drag I'm not saying boring almost semi-boring but i was like okay, okay so all right we're going here again all right and by the end of it i i really enjoyed the movie there's great great phenomenal stuff in here both are wonderful i bought the chemistry of, of of each other this is a great movie this is a wonderful movie and for the rating of this movie for malcolm and lee i gotta give a nine out of ten fantastic movie 
off. I mean, incredible, incredible. But I'll tell you guys, please don't be toxic like these two people. Please. This is a movie that should be a lesson for what not to do. <laughs> so what do you think about Malcolm and Reed? Did you, I mean, of them as people, I guess, but also about the movie. Did you guys enjoy the movie? Did you guys not like the movie? What did you like? What did you not like? Let's talk about it in the comments and let's discuss the movie itself. So please stay tuned for more film reviews and other kinds of stuff, film related or other things that are not film related, or music related, different languages, Spanish and English. Stay tuned for that. Please like, share, and subscribe to Hablando Shit. So my name is Sebastian Sierra. Y yo seguiré aquí. Hablando Shit.